When I was born in 1969, it was the first time it was legally acceptable for girls to wear pants to school. A few years later, in 1972, it was the year that Title IX was passed, which told public school system federally funded institutions that you have to provide money in equal amounts to girls to participate in activities, specifically sports. I played sports my whole life. In 1974, finally, my single mother was allowed to apply for credit on her own. Before then, she had to get her brother-in-law to sign for her to buy a car. I have had credit cards, I've purchased homes, run businesses, my whole life. In 1978, now I am playing softball, by the way, because in 1974, the Little League had to admit girls in, but because the adults did not want girls playing with boys, they created softball. So I grew up playing softball. That year in 1978 was a year that it was finally illegal to fire women because they got pregnant, which was a common practice up to that time. I can go on about all the laws that gave women equal access, equal opportunity in society. I bring this up because next year, 2020, marks 100 years that women have been advocating for equal access and equal opportunity and protections as women in society. We want to participate. In 1920, the 19th Amendment not only gave us the legal right to vote, it actually did more than just present a law. It actually started changing the hearts and minds of people and really spoke to the belief systems of people. Because what it said was, women are humans. They're people. They're not property. In fact, 1993 was when it was legally declared rape for a man to demand sex any way he wanted from his wife. So a law was passed to protect women, but it really was a mindset about how people think about, thought about, continue to think about marriage, male-female dynamic. To whom does a woman's body belong? And while the God I follow tells me that my husband's body is mine and my body is his, in a biblical, spiritual sense, the truth of the matter is, I am a unique individual. And that is emotionally difficult for people to handle sometimes, which is why there are still conflicts when it comes to the male-female dynamic. 2020 marks 100 years since the passage of the 19th Amendment and women getting the right to vote. I am excited. I am proud of the presentation I have created and already begun to deliver. We have come a long way, but there's still work to be done. I do not necessarily believe that we need to create more laws. I do believe, however, that a lot of the laws that have been written the, the data facts and stats that are out there are not just about changing attitudes, they're about changing the heart of people. So laws that have been on the books and written, like my God says, now need to be written on the heart. Bring me into your social groups, invite me into your companies, hire me to speak to the people you care about, and let's explore what has a hundred years of lawmaking done for the male-female dynamic. What does it mean to be different but equal? What does it mean to be male-female, different, not the same, but equal? What does that mean as we move forward into the next 100 years? I look forward to a prosperous and pleasant and happy and joy-filled 2020. Shalom.